नमस्कृत नरम चैव नरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जया मुदीरय नष्ट प्रायसु अभद्रेशु नित्यम भागवत से भया भगवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्ति भगवती नैष्ठिके so uh we are discussing from shrimad bhagavatam canto 3 chapter 17 and verse number 18 the canto is the status quo and the chapter title is the victory of hiranyaksha over all the rejections of the universe प्रजापति नाम प्रजापति कश्यप नाम नेम्स अशुत Gave path to Sha, C, D, T, Agrata, fast. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, Lakshmi. Translation. Prajapati Kashyap, the creator of the living entities, gave his two sons, twin sons, their names. The one who was born fast, he named Hiranyaksha, and the one who was fast conceived by Diti, he named Hiranyakashyapu. Purport by His Divine Grace. There is an authoritative Vedic literature called Pinda Siddhi, in which the scientific understanding of pregnancy is very nicely described. It is stated that when the male secretion enters the menstrual flocks in the uterus in two successive drops, the mother develops two embryos in her womb, and she brings forth twins in a reverse order to that in which they were first conceived. The child conceived first is born later, and the one conceived later is brought forth first. The first child conceived in the womb lives behind the second child. So, when birth takes place, the second child appears first, and the first child appears second. In this case, it is understood that Hiranyaksha, the second child conceived, was delivered first, whereas Hiranyakashyap, the child who was behind him, having been conceived first, was born second. ओम ज्ञानतिमिरंदस्य ज्ञानञ्जनासलाकाय चक्रुमुरितमेन तस्मै श्री गुरवे नमः श्री चैतन्य मनोभीष्टं स्थापितं येनां भूतले स्वयं रूपं कदामयं ददान्ति सोपदान्तिकं वन्देहं श्री गुरु सीयुत पदकमळं श्री गुरु वैष्णवं च श्री रूपं सगरजातं सहगण रघुनाथितं तं सजीवं साद्वैतं शाबधूतं परिजन सहितं कृष्ण चैतन्य देवं श्री राधा कृष्ण पादं सहगण ललिता स विशखां वितं च हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीन बंधु जगतपते गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानु सुते देवी प्रणमामि हरि प्रिये वंश कल्प तरु वश्च कृपा सिंधु वय वश पतितान पावनेभ्य वैष्णवेभ्य नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्री प्रसादी गोर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे निराजल निवासय नित्यात्मने बड़भद्र सुभद्राभ्या जगन्नाथय ते नम हरे कृष्ण डिओ डिवोटिस Thank you for joining today for the morning stream of Bhagavatam class. So this day we are discussing about the about the appearance of Hiranyakashyap and Hiranyaksha, and how from the courses of the four Kumaras, Jaya Vijay got transformed into um into this material planet, and how Jaya Vijay actually took part. So we uh, in here particularly in this uh, uh in this uh, particular verse. the how about how the how the uh, soul enters the enters the mother's womb all and how, what happens after that all those things you know it is it is being being described a little bit briefly so 
so we will go deep a little bit deep into it so my knowledge in this uh Srimad Bhagavatam glorification is very limited but with all of your blessings i will try to glorify this beautiful subject matter which is which is called amal puran uh, and i need all of your blessings to so that i can nicely glorify this beautiful subject so that also i will be also you know like a little bit also purified by this so we are seeing here that kashyap muni is having a name giving ceremony of his two sons basically he has kashyap muni has two twin sons so his first twin son he has two twin sons so his names are he has given the names of hiranyakashyap and hiranaksha basically if you see here in both the cases the name hiranya is there so hiranya means gold and kashyap means soft bread and in case of hiranyaksha his name meaning is his again hiranya then akshya means the person whose eyes are always fixed on the gold and the wealth it is called hiranyaksha so from the name we see that you know like both of the, both the brothers are very very um, they want to be wealthy they want to capture so many wealth they are after gold and uh, they they can do any means to capture this gold basically gold uh, also represents another way of you know like uh, lord's illusory energy maya so they are after this lots of illusory energy so they want to be rich and they want to be there very very aggressive to capture it so basically the both the brothers are very very greedy so and uh, if we see this our uh, in this particular uh, verse proper is a little bit describing how what how uh, the how uh, how how actually basically the uh, what happens inside the mother's womb so we see that you know if whatever happens in this material planet whether it is a human's body or how the kids are formed what happens after death everything is basically described in shrimad bhagavatam they say that shrimad bhagavatam basically is the essence of the all sciences so everything is described so we see that here that you know um, any particular chapter we take from shrimad bhagavatam there is some kind of lesson behind it we definitely take something in take from it so we see that that's why i call it a shrimad bhagavatam is amala purana and uh, there is no contamination nothing is there and definitely and we get some essence out of it all the time so if we see that uh, if propat here is describing about the womb, so we'll describe a little bit uh, in today's class what really happens inside the mother womb there's a nice chapter in shrimad bhagavatam maybe after a uh, few weeks we're going to discuss about a child's prayer inside the womb so since it is description is little bit about the womb, we will be discussing little bit about what happens inside the mother's womb how the jiva or the jantu inside the mother's womb suffers and how he prays and uh, before that let's analyze little bit what are the four aspects of life the four aspects of life is janma mrutyu jara prathi this janma mrutyu jara prathi if you see all these four they are not at all pleasant nobody when we take bath we cry then death uh, then you know is uh, about death is described here death is inevitable and we cannot avoid it but nobody wants to die so again jara jara is old days old days you know we cannot whatever we want to do we cannot do so we are unhappy then vyadhi vyadhi basically our listen to our listening to our adhyam prabhu he is nicely saying that vyadhi basically disease disease means this here he has basically he is uh, dividing this towards dis and is means uh, what takes out the easiness from us that is uh, basically disease so when the easiness is removed from us we are not happy so when we are having so much wealth with the, with us and suppose thief is coming and stealing from us and uh, we have so much uh, you know like money in the stock market the stock market crashes we our money get lost so we become unhappy so these things you know like comes doesn't come giving announcement this comes you know all of a sudden so we become unhappy because our precious thing is getting lost so when the death comes to us when you comprehend that death is coming we become unhappy we get mad we get irritated we get agitated by the most precious thing our body on the basis of which we enjoy everything all this wealth all this gold all this beautiful house to enjoy everything with this need need this body when the body won't be there how are we going to enjoy so when we think that death is coming so we become irritated and we get uh, uh, and we get irritated and we uh, we, uh, we try to avoid it but however we try we cannot avoid it why can't avoid it because we are con- we are basically conditioned uh, souls and who are basically inside a case of this material universe so however we try we cannot come out of it so, so if we see that uh, we are part and parcel of uh, krishna and uh, krishna is super soul he is very powerful as a jiva as a soul also he has some kind of power also but we can fight as as long as when 
we come in contact with this material nature we cannot basically we uh, we get uh, we cannot utilize that power so that's why we should try however we should try how not to get associated with this material energy of lord so we can imagine Prabhupada always gives an example of a lion a lion when inside a cage inside a cage when the lion is there lion is basically tied inside a cage whatever he try he cannot come out but when the lion is inside the forest he is moving all around he is very ferocious, he is the king of the lion. But when inside the he is inside the case, the small, small kids will come to the zoo and they will try to feed peanuts to the lion. And the lion can do anything because lion knows that he has become inside the case and uh, inside the cage. So similarly, the conditioned soul of the Badha Jiva, you know, he is also tried inside this uh, material universe such a case. You know, why we are inside the material universe? Because we have two things we did. We um we basically taunt our face away from krishna so we so that's why we are here and why we are here we take repeated birth so we repeated birth when we do right the soul basically enters into the mother's womb so then seven then in the 31st chapter there is a beautiful uh, uh discussion about the prayer of child within the mother's womb so when the jiva or the soul enters the mother's womb the what happens that that inside the mother's womb you know there are so many troubles are there so many miseries are there so outside also there are so many miseries, so many we discuss now. But inside the mother's womb also there are so many miseries are there. Inside the mother's womb there will be so many in, in, inside our intestine, right? There are so many hungry worms will be there. So they will be biting this little uh, uh, little fetus or the uh, or the baby inside the mother's womb constantly will be biting it. Basically the womb and the fetus or the baby they say are the same mother's mother's uh, womb. That's, that's why they call they are the worms and this, uh, this jiva, they, they are called basically sohodaras. So sometimes the mother eats bitter, pungent food stuff, which is too salty and sour. That also gives some kind of irritation to the, to the baby inside the womb. Then there is amino acid, which is uh, covered uh, inside, it's, it's a fluid, is the amino acid fluid is there, which is also sour. So inside the sour also, the babe, the uh, inside the sour also, the embryo also, you know, like it is over there and the baby also is moving inside that. But however it tries, the baby cannot come out of because it is covered by the intestine lining. Now just imagine, like uh, if we, somebody keeps us in, the, in a dark room and there is some worm is inside. So how panic will be? And uh, there will be some, uh, some you know, when we are walking on the road or walking inside our house, we see that something is falling. Some liquid, some dirty liquid is falling. Some uh, fluid is falling. Some acid is falling. Some pungent food stuff is there. So what we do, we become irritated and we try to remove it. But inside the mother's womb, the baby cannot do all those things. So basically, just like a bird inside a cage, without any freedom of movement, the baby is well, staying inside it. And within that, the growth of the baby also happens. So it's such a small place and the, and the baby is kind of, you know, like putting his head towards uh, inside, towards the towards town. He is just calling and he is staying inside without any movement. So here we see that the worms are also born from the same environment and uh, the baby also is there, but baby cannot remain in one place and the worms are also moving there. And slowly what happens at the seventh month, um, by Krishna's mercy, the consciousness develops and the conditioned soul, because what he does, he started offering the prayer. So then at that moment, he realizes that, you know, like, uh, yes, I am the conditioned soul, I am inside the mother's womb, and he sees the presence of the super soul there. He realizes that he is contaminated and he is basically uh, doesn't have any power he is impure and he has he he is forgetting things but how super soul is not entangled at all super soul is not contaminated super soul is always pure he is always intelligent and he has he is not forgetful at all what do we talk about forgetfulness because uh, if somebody asks us what we ate 3 days before we have to think twice what we really ate what we did we spend you know like last week somebody asks we will think what verse we spoke last week we try to think, but just you can imagine. But super soul, you know, he is he's not at all forgetful. He knows about each and all every living being, their past, present, future, everything he knows. And he has not forgotten us. That's why he he's just making sure that he is inside the womb along with the this conditioned soul. So this when the conditioned soul, when he realizes all those things, he becomes very, very prayerful to the super soul. Now there is a beautiful prayer of uh, Maharaj Kula Sekar in the Mukunda Mala Sutra, where he is saying that, O Lord Mukunda, I always want to bow down. I always want to bow down in front of my head, in front of you. 
and repent respectfully ask you that there is i have only one desire kindly fulfill that now what is that desire now in each of my future birth and by your mercy i should always remember you i should never forget your lotus feet always i should remember it lotus feet so all the beautiful prayers we have sila prabhupada says let that you know like abhay charana rabinda because why we should not always we should not forget krishna's lotus feet because in krishna's lotus feet we have the shelter we have the protection now if we see that all, always this conditioned soul you know like uh, is fearful why the conditioned soul is fearful because he has turned his face away from krishna that's why we are fearful now when we turn our face away from krishna what happens there are two things happens to us we miss and misidentify ourselves we stay in the bodily platform we forget that yes we are as conditioned soul and we are part of parcel of krishna and we forget that for who we are why we are coming from here and what we should do everything we forget now in simha bhagavatam also it is mentioned that fear arises when a living entity misidentifies himself as the material body how why he does that because he is absorbed in the krishna's illusory energy or the material energy or the external energy of the lord so automatically when the when the conditioned soul is captured by the illusory energy slowly slowly what he does he turns his face away from supreme personality of godhead and he forgets his constitutional position that his constitutional position is that jibira swarup hai krishna ra nitya das he forgets that he is a servant of the lord thus this bewildering and and this uh, fearful condition which is affected that is called the maya so everybody gets uh, affected by the maya potency now the soul conditioned soul inside the mother womb realizes that how um you know like how how knowledgeable krishna is basically he realizes that krishna is the source of everything there are three uh, vishnu forms are there in in form of the in form of the maha vishnu krishna is omnipotent in from the form of garbhadaksha vishnu he is omnipresent and in in the form of kyodaksha vishnu krishna is basically omniscient but like a lion is tied inside a cage this conditioned soul becomes you know like he is tied inside a cage and though he realizes everything due to his nature of you know like getting forgetfulness he forgets everything so jiva is enduring inside the mother's womb they because you know he has got his consciousness because of the krishna's mercy he is enduring that how long i am going to stay here because in this uh, in this dark atmosphere how long i am going to stay here then he is taken thinking that i am inside the mother womb i am suffering outside also also there is more suffering also there because outside we see it's a it's a fort it's a fort of the maha, of the uh, mahamaya there there is more actually basically there are more miseries are there so he is discussing thinking that inside also i am in the, in the miserable conditions is there outside also miserable condition is there what am i going to do now so we see that there is a beautiful story i was uh, hearing uh, there was a um, there was a man was there he did some kind of stealing or some kind of not favorable act so police captures him so the, when the police captures him the first punishment you know like uh, he police decided to give him that to to hit to hit him with a uh, stick kind of thing so the uh, man becomes you know like he was little weak and he is asking that is there any other alternative so then the, the police told that yes you can give us some uh, token amount of uh, lakshmi so that we can deposit and we can leave you now what is the amount of lakshmi the police told that uh, the guards tell that yeah you have to give 50000 to the king so that then we are going, going to let you free at 50000 where i am where i am going to get the man tapers and uh, is there any other alternative then the guards tell him that you have to drink otherwise you know 5 kilos of ghee the person asks is the ghee free the uh, the guard replied yes the ghee is free but you have to drink all 5 kilos of ghee at one shot now the person becomes very happy yes i am the lean and thin this ghee is there this ghee is free i'm i can drink this ghee and i will whole life i don't have to i don't have to drink ghee and this is pure desi ghee if i drink it i will become healthy he decides that okay let me go the third option basically the third option is that he has to drink the ghee five kilos of ghee one shot is at a drinking the ghee the thinking that i will become very strong after drinking this ghee now he started drinking the ghee while drinking drinking maximum he did realize that he is able to drink two or three glasses of ghee which is coming about around half kilo then he stops and he asks the guards that uh, um maximum i can drink half half kilo can i drink it later the guard replies no the condition was that you have to drink it at one at five kilos otherwise you get will be beating 
Then this moment the person realizes this five plus ghee was very lucrative in the beginning. He was thinking that yes, it is very nice, very desirable option. I should go for it. But when he comes near, he sees how difficult it is. So similarly, we see in the material world, there are so many sufferings are there. We try to get our one suffering. Looking it far away, this you know, material world, this gold and everything looks very, very beautiful and very, very you know, like um, attractive to us. But when you go nearby, we realize how challenging, how difficult the situation is. So similarly in the mother's womb also, the, uh, the conditioned soul also constantly is thinking that outside also is a difficulty, inside also is difficulty. So what am I going to do? So in that, he is constantly offering prayers. Now later on, uh, later on what happens? Uh, in this condition, in past, later on, uh, when the 10th month comes, the baby comes out and get exposed to the material world. Now, due to Krishna's mercy, you know, sometimes we see that we, we try to remember things. <clears throat> we try to remember things like the, like the prayer of the child. The prayer of the child is so meaningful and so beautiful. And we, here we see that how a child suffers inside the, inside the mother's womb. And when we are suffering, right, that time basically we remember Krishna. Like we see that anytime there is any suffering, immediately Krishna's name come out of our prayer. Oh, Krishna, come, please come and let us. So basically when we are suffering and we are praying, but there are some souls who do the continuous, who so basically who remember continuously. And if, you, if we see the example of Prahalad Maharaj. So Prahalad Maharaj, when he was inside the mother's womb, inside the mother's womb also, he was remembering. The same Hiranyakashipu's son is taking birth as Prahalad Maharaj. So when Prahalad Maharaj was inside Kayadu's mother, Kayadu's womb, there are so many, so many atrocities that's going on out so uh, here at one end, Hiranyakashipu uh, is doing penance so that he is going to kill Vishnu. He is going to overpower Vishnu. And here Narad Muni is talking about Vishnu's glories to, Kaya, to Kayadu. So the Prahlad from the mother's womb is very, very conscious. So that consciousness he carries till the end. Similarly, if you see the examples of example of Abhimanyu. Abhimanyu basically when he was inside the mother's womb, uh, Subhadra Devi and Arjun were discussing about the Chakra Bhiva. When he was describing about the chakra bhiva, uh, mother, uh, mother Subhadra basically was a little bit dozing off and uh, Abhimanyu could hear some person of it. So that time we see that Abhimanyu is able to remember uh, able to remember, and later he is going to help it. Then best example are Parikit Maharaj. In Parikit Maharaj, you know, like he could see Krishna from the mother's womb. And outside when he comes, right, he is very much conscious. He is inside the mother's womb, he is conscious, and the outside also mother's womb, he is conscious. He has never forgotten Krishna. So these three souls, if we identify that they have, they are very, very, you know, like uh, conscious and they are very much, you know, like uh, well-knowing and they have never forgotten Krishna. They have never forgotten the, the blessings and the mercy of Krishna on them. Now here we have another example of Sugriv Maharaj, the Sugriv. Basically, Sugriv, uh, he was, uh, uh, Lord Ram basically made him the king. After the coronation ceremony, Sugriv totally forgot about Lord Ram's favor. So then Lakshman has to go and he has to remind him that this was this is what actually was given to you. Then there is also a beautiful story of Yamunacharya. Yamunacharya, when he was a small kid, he remembered all the Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita. But later on, I, he forgot due to material influence. But later, but later on, his spiritual master, he uh, sent Rama Mishra. And uh, he could remind and he could re realize and then again, he became uh, one of the ma major, you know, like prominent figure of the Sri Shampradaya. Now, we see here that constant remembrance is very, very important and how from the mother's womb, it takes also. Basically, we see that, you know, like uh, whatever goes in, basically, sometimes it comes out. Now, if we see that uh, this, um, we, we can we can just a little bit go back. We In the Srimad Bhagavatam, you know, maybe past two or three uh, chapters back, we see that Mother Diti, she was a little unhappy that all her, her co-sisters, basically Aditi and others, they already have kids and she doesn't have. So basically she has this competition mentality inside, inside, inside her that uh, yes, others are having and I don't have it. So in that mind, he approaching Kasyap Muni and the timing was not, and not good. So with all this mentality in the mind, then you know she started conceiving and we see that Hiranyakasyap and Hiranyakya are born. 
So Mother Diti basically he is a very, very pious lady and all these things have, are happening only because of Krishna's desire. And we have to basically learn from all these, you know, like incidents and all these past times that what should be our goal and how we should behave. Now we can take another example of Mother Gandhari. Mother Gandhari, you know, the same story again. So uh, like uh, Kunti Devi also is conceiving and Mother Gandhari also is conceiving at the same time. So Kunti Devi's kids came first. So Mother Gandhari is still having the kids inside the womb. So they didn't, they didn't come out. So what she did? She basically a uh, little bit cursed and he stamps on the stomach and an uh, iron piece comes out. And from the iron piece, basically later on, uh, so they basically he uh, transplanted into some small, small hundred, small hundred kids were born. So I think, uh, and the eldest, eldest son from them was become, was Duryodhan. So again, the same thing, the anger and the frustration was there. And that again, those things are carried out to do, 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 Duryodhan. So we see that what is basically the source is from that it little bit impacts for the next generation. So sometimes we see that if a preacher is very strong, the new, the new candidates who come and join our congregation, they are also very strong. They are also very advanced. But when it's a neophyte preacher is there, so how, the preaching also matters also. But basically what we learn, the same way basically we try to preach outside. So basically that's why we tell, we Prabhupada always tells that all my disciples are perfect. It should be, you know, like perfect gentlemen and the perfect ladies. So that the with whom we are interacting, they will also become very perfect. Now, another example also we can take about Lord Shiva. Srimad Bhagavatam also, it is mentioned that uh, when Brahma asked Lord Shiva uh, about the progeny, you know, whatever were, were produced were basically the, the Buddhas and Prathas, basically in the same destruction mentality they were created. So that's why whatever we are thinking and whatever we are imagining and whatever our mindset and consciousness, we see that that gets carried away. So instead of when we're talking about a mother and the mother's womb, the thought process and the consciousness of the mother also matters a lot. So we see here that Hiranyakarsyup and Hiranyakya are born with a mentality of greediness and fierceness within them. And when they're in the mother's womb, they made so much havoc. Everything was dark and everything they were born and there are so many uh, disturbances uh, um, in the surrounding world and inside in the surrounding world. But when they take birth also, they are going to create so much havoc, which we are going to describe in, in Srimad Bhagavatam in the upcoming verses. So with this, I would like to end today's discussion. So over to you, Madhupati Prabhu, and Sula Prabhupada Ki Jai, Hari Bol. Thank you very much, Prabhu. <clears throat> I'd like to wish you all a safe and Krishna conscious day ahead. I would like to offer our prayers by chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Chino Shingo, Jaina Shingo, Jaina Shingo, Radesha Jayapada, Bhagavata Vrinda, Ogravira, Bhagavata Vrinda, Thank you, Prem. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you, Hari.